When you hear people talk about building your list, what they mean is basically your customers or subscribers who have opted to receive information from you or purchased a product from you in the past. Many of the biggest marketers in the world will say time and time again that the real money is in your list, and to a certain degree, they're right. Now from my vantage point, I would have to say this really depends on what the focus of your business is. Some people focus on the quote toll booth approach, where the one-time sale is really all they care about. Generally, this comprises the majority of affiliate marketers. They're primarily concerned with getting a customer to a merchant site and then having that customer make a purchase and earn a commission in the process. They might not care about remarketing to that customer at a later date. They are perfectly content with focusing on the initial sale and then doing that over and over and over again. But what about those of you who have a business and who want a way to not only keep in touch with your customers or subscribers, but let them know about future promotions, discounts, and other things related to your business? What can you do? Well, you guessed it. You need to build a list. What I've learned, though, is that there is power in a list if, and this is a big if, if you have a good relationship with the people on your list. Here's a real-life story to prove the point. I own a few sites that have been gathering subscribers for several years. For the majority of that time, they've set in my autoresponder account with relatively no relationship building on my part. Now, just so we're clear, I don't endorse the constant bombardment of messages to your subscribers. Nothing will create more unsubscribers fast than doing just that. But not sending anything can be equally as detrimental. The problem with doing nothing with your subscribers is that you don't have any kind of personal relationship with them when the time comes that you do want to send them something or you want them to buy something. If out of the blue I were to send them a message after two years, they one, would have totally forgotten about signing up in the first place and immediately think it was junk, or two, think who in the heck is this guy just now sending me something after all this time. It's really about balance. What you must remember is that when a person subscribes to receive information from you, they want and expect to receive information from you. Too often, people focus too much attention or too little attention on their subscribers and in turn disenfranchise a large group of these people and end up not reaping the benefits of a well-maintained list. I think the majority of the problem rests in the fact that people forget they are dealing with real people on the other end of that email. So much of what the internet represents to marketers is numbers, click-through rates, and other numerical metrics. We forget that like in real life, successful businesses are built upon personal relationships. We must treat our subscribers and customers like our best friends, or even better. The goal is not to always send them the next great product they must have. The goal is not to always focus on extracting the greatest amount of money out of each subscriber. And the goal is not to focus on what they can do for you. Now, in fact, if that's your focus, then any success you might find will be short-lived and fleeting. What I've found time and time again in both internet marketing and in brick-and-mortar businesses, as I've done both, is that when I take the time to build a relationship with my customers, I create a dynamic that is much more about helping than selling. And that's a big secret. You see, if I don't accomplish that relationship dynamic, and if my subscribers think that every time they receive something from me, it's going to be about something else they need to buy, then ultimately, I'll fail. Instead, if I can focus and treat my valuable subscribers as the lifeblood to my business, treating them as I would a family member or a close friend, then I will have a successful business. Not necessarily because I make the most sales with the most people, but because I provide value to those who have put their trust and faith in me, and in turn, allow me to make the most sales from the right people. I heard a fellow marketer once say something that I now try to live by when it comes to business, and I challenge you to the same. It goes something like this. Instead of asking, how can I get a million people to give me a dollar? Ask the following. How can I give a million people $100 in value while asking for $10 in return? Now, at first glance, the true power in that statement might not hit you. Go back and reread it one more time. The first question focuses on what I can get my customers to do for me, which, when you think about it, is the absolute opposite of the whole point of providing a product or service to begin with. It's not about money. It's about addressing a need that in turn produces money, not the other way around. The second question focuses on the true reason behind offering a product. 
it's because the customer is the one benefiting, and in a huge way. Now don't get me wrong, I'm probably one of the most capitalistic people you can meet. I love the idea of business and creating wealth out of ideas and services. But what I've discovered is that every time I focus on providing 10 times or more the value for every dollar I ask back in return, I always end out coming ahead, as does my customer. The point of this little tangent is this. Make sure you know the exact solution your products address and the people who are most interested in knowing it. Then build a relationship with them, a personal relationship with each and every subscriber. So creating a list is very important, but it's more important how that list is maintained. You must remember that your list is much more than a name and email address. There is a real person at the other end of that information, and to maximize both your profits and their satisfaction, you must treat them with a level of care no less than what you would expect if you were in their shoes.